So many people are talking about the blockchain, and the reason is that it's an amazing technology. So far, several revolutionizing applications have been built on top of it, including Bitcoins, Ethereum, and NFTs. The only problem with the blockchain is that it's fairly hard to understand. Today, in this video, I want to take a completely different approach and explain you how it works. I want to tell you a story instead. And this story is set in a remote land from thousands of years ago. A place where computers were not even in people's mind, and everything was still analog. The idea is that with this story, it's going to be much easier for you to understand the overall concept without having to deal with the complexities added by computers. At the end, we'll make sure that we'll bring the concepts from the story to the real world and understand how blockchain works nowadays. Before we dive into the story, I'd like to kindly ask you to subscribe using the button here. I know most of my viewers haven't subscribed yet to the channel, so it would be very helpful if you did it. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom with a beautiful castle in a place called Centralized Land. In the castle, a king used to live with his family and his royal court. He had three knights that were working for him and the royal family, Joe the Gnome, Henry the Wizard, and Alice. His knights spent most of the year outside the castle in order to explore new areas around the kingdom and find new resources such as gold or water. They used to send messages to each other about the findings all the time. For example, yesterday Henry sent a message to Alice and Joe telling them he found a new type of trees up north. Henry sent the message to the castle, then the king's workers made sure to deliver the letter to the other recipients. Since the knights were spending most of the time outside the castle, they also used to trade with these messages. For example, if Joe found half a kilogram of gold, he could pay Alice for some of the apples that she found in the areas she was exploring. He would simply write a message to the king asking to pay Alice, and then the king would send a message telling Alice that she got some gold from Joe. And for transparency, he would send the same message to Henry. In this way, once they all came back to the castle, they could settle up based on what has been written on the messages while they were out exploring. But one day, something unimaginable happened. People of the kingdom decided to fight against the king and to kick him out of his throne. From that day, the kingdom became the centralized land, and Joe, Henry, and Alice had to find a new way to exchange messages without having to rely on a king. Their first thought was to instead of writing a message and send it to the king, they could always write two messages and send them to all the other knights. In this way, they will all be aware of any communication or trade that has happened. And so, once they all came back to the castle, they would just go over the transactions in their letters and settle the trades. At first, this seems like a good idea, but then Alice became concerned. How can we ensure that people are not going to trick the system by just writing some letters with other people's names? And that, that's a great point. What if Alice receives a letter stating that Joe wants to give her half a kilogram of gold for free, but in reality it's just a prank that Henry decided to do and wrote that letter and fake Joe's signature? In the past, this would not have happened because the king was able to recognize the handwriting of all the knights. But how can Alice, Henry, and Joe solve this problem? Luckily, Henry the Wizard has an idea. He can build a signet ring for everyone. With a signet ring, they will all recognize each other's signature, but it will be impossible for any of them to fake it. So if Alice receives a letter with Joe's signet at the bottom, she'll be sure that the letter came from him, since Henry doesn't have a signet ring that could do that stamp. Henry made those signets so special that even if Henry wanted, he could not forge or build a signet equal to the one Joe has. With this, they could always be sure that each message contained the real author. So now Henry, Joe, and Alice have been sending messages to each other daily. Each letter was very different compared to the others. Some letters contained communications, such as when Joe found some diamonds close to the South River. Other letters were traits, like that time Alice found some unique roses at the foot of the North Mountain and sold them to Henry, who was a collector. Joe even sent some love poems and drawings to Alice. 
Because of the number of messages they were receiving, they each decided to have a ledger where one page contained one message. They also wanted to make sure that they all kept the messages in the same order. It once happened that due to snowstorm, Alice received Joe's messages two days after Henry did. So they decided that each message had to contain the title of the last message they received. In this way, even if one person received a message later, he could just put it in the right place in the ledger. They decided to call this special type of ledger a blockchain. One day, an evil guy named Seth decided to mess with Joe, Harry, and Alice. He learned about their way of communicating and decided that he wanted to break in. He was able to create a signet similar to the ones Harry had and use it to write its own signature. And he decided to only send the messages to Alice and not to the other knights. In the messages, he was stating that he was a new knight, helping Joe southeast. Because of the signature, Alice thought that the message was real and she trusted him. At first things were fine, but at some point, Alice could no longer put her messages in order in her blockchain. Seth's messages were following one order, but Joe and Henry were using a different one. This is the trick that Seth was using to mess up with the system. He was just sending messages to Alice without letting Joe and Henry know. Alice, after receiving the message from Joe about the diamonds, she received two messages that were referring to that same message, one from Seth and one from Joe. And then she received another message from Henry that was referring to Joe's message. So which set of messages is the right one? How can she make sure that they are all agreeing on the same chain of messages? Once they all came back to the castle, Alice brought that issue up and Joe had an idea. If you have two sets of blockchain messages, you should always trust the longest one. So in the case Alice had two messages, one from Joe and one from Seth, instead of deciding which one to keep right away, she could wait for the next messages. Since both Henry and Joe did not know about Seth's message, the next message they'll send will be unaware of Seth's messages. So at that point, Alice, between the two blockchains, will only trust the longest one, which is the one containing Henry and Joe's messages. But Alice still had a doubt. What if Seth kept sending me messages? In that case, the two blockchains might have had the same length, or the blockchain with Seth's messages might become longer first. After thinking a bit about the problem, Alice had a solution. The idea was to make it almost impossible for a participant in this system to keep lying. Her plan is the following. Every time we send a message, we first need to find 10 antique red mushrooms. We can then use them to create a special ink to write on the message. Finding 10 of those mushrooms is hard, and it takes a lot of luck, since they grow everywhere on the region, but always in different spots. It usually takes a day for a night to find them. Joe was still confused about this approach, but Alice gave him an example. Think of that time where I received both Joe and Seth's message. Without this addition, both Joe and Seth could send me messages at the same pace, and there's never going to be a longer blockchain. But now, if Seth wants to keep lying, he has to find 10 mushrooms for each message. And since you guys are two, you have a much better chance than him at finding them and writing me a message first. Even if he gets lucky once or twice, being two people should give you better odds at finding the mushrooms before him. At that point, Joe understood it. As long as more than 50% of the people in the system are not lying, the system will work. With this addition, their way of communicating never had any other issues. They succeeded in finding a new way of talking in a reliable and transparent way in the centralized land, and they live happily ever after. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the story and maybe you already got a bit of intuition how a modern blockchain would work based on what you learned about Joe, Henry, and Alice. I'll now go over each of the five chapters of the story and we'll see what the differences are with real blockchain. You'll be surprised there are not that many. So centralized land is how most of our current computer system works. There's always a central authority that decides where communications go, which in the story was the king. Or think of a bank where every payment is approved and processed by a single entity. 
Well, with blockchain, things are different and decentralized entity no longer exists. The only remaining players in the system are the knights, which in the blockchain case is every computer that participates in the blockchain. If you want it, it could also be your computer. Let's just refer to these computers as nodes for simplicity, since they can be any type of device. Similarly to the knights, every node in the blockchain sends messages of different types to everyone in the system. And the goal is to make sure that all the nodes in the system are getting the same messages. So when a computer sends a transaction, such as Joe is paying two bitcoins to Alice, how do we guarantee that the message was actually initiated by Joe? Well, in computer science, there is something extremely similar to a magic signet ring, and it's called a public-private key encryption. Explaining you how it works is not the scope of the video, but you should really think of it as a magic signet ring. Every message will be encrypted with a private key of the author, like the ring, and then everyone else in the system will be able to confirm that by using the author's public key, which in the case of the story was the sign that the ring was living on the ladder. So the blockchain is very similar to the ledger that Alice, Henry, and Joe were using. Every node participating in the system has one copy of the blockchain. Each message can contain very different things, for example, transactions or what are used by cryptocurrencies, such as bitcoins or ethereum. Or in the case of Joe's poem or drawing for Alice, well, that today would be referred to as an NFT. Similarly to the Knight's ledger, also messages in the blockchain are in order, and each message should contain a reference to the previous one. Real blockchains do not use the title of the message, but instead they use a unique code that was derived from the previous message. As you can imagine, there are a lot of evil guys in the blockchain. Potentially every person with a computer and an internet connection can become an evil guy. The way the knights solve this problem is the same as how the blockchain is working today. Currently, each node that is facing multiple blockchains will always choose the longest one. Do you remember the proof of work? The fact that they always had to collect 10 special mushrooms before sending a message? Something very similar happens in the real blockchains. Before sending each message, a node has to solve a mathematical riddle. Similarly to how mushrooms were growing randomly across the land, this riddle requires some effort and also a bit of luck. I do not want to go into the details of this in the video, but it deals with finding the right input to a hash function to get a specific value. What matters here is that thanks to the proof of work and the fact that each node only trusts the longest blockchain, as long as 50% of nodes are not compromised, we're guaranteed that the system will work. So in conclusion, this is how the blockchain works. Each node is adding messages to it, and it makes sure that all the other nodes in the system are aware of this addition. Thanks to public-private key encryption, we can guarantee the authenticity of each message, while with the proof of work, we can make sure that the system won't be compromised, as long as more than 50% of the nodes in the system are not lying. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. And as always, remember to subscribe to the channel.